And it's even less than two minutes, guys. We're instantly here. Dignitas, the Germans, very efficient with the Spanish team on the other side. We have the new draft already up. So, Nick, let's just directly jump into it. So that gives us also the opportunity to still, to still like, talk a bit about the first game. Yeah, I just feel like the composition that Stigma ran on Cursed Hollow is really, really ideal. And I feel that Dignitas trying to go for a team fight composition, not really the best draft strategy I've ever seen. I'm not really a fan of that double healer unless, unless you're running with some kind of Illidan composition. But um, yeah, I just feel like they kind of lacked the damage and kind of lacked the uh, the combo possibilities. So I would have really liked to see them draft more of a wombo combo composition, but they kind of went for a double healer and a, and a sergeant hammer. It just didn't make sense to me. I feel like it was not a clean composition. But Stigma's kind of rotational composition, kind of outlast composition, was uh, right on the point, especially for a map like Curse Tala. Yep. I mean, I had the feeling like this, this, there were two ideas behind this Dignitas draft, like either the let's push early with Sergeant Hammer, Savannas and a healer in a tri-lane and make something happen there, but that kind of got shut down by a counter tri-lane, which did a good job, Tassada, Shield, like just driving them away. And of course, the other idea was like maybe that protect the sergeant hammer at all costs with a double healer strat just put him in siege mode um let's just go for the fun and right click him or let him light right click the others but it just didn't work out like those clutch fights and everything i mean nuruk uh, you, you saw it on the hero damage he he did good damage but it was just not enough it was just not enough you saw the fights sometimes they were pretty close when you looked at the hp but overall i always had the feeling that even with a double healer dignitas they the, uh, the longer the fight went, the the worse it got on their HP bars. Like Stigma just had a better grip on, like yeah, stealing your HP. Either way, that's that's pretty much the summary of of game number one. Dignitas one down, Stigma having a good start here. I mean, they need to win. They had a rush through qualifier four. Now they're in a loser bracket because they face pretty strong teams in the winner bracket already. We have to see. They have to make it a 2-0 to be on the safe side, or we're we gonna see a hype hype game three. We have to see. First, let's hop into this draft. Yeah, Hefla, I've got to say I've been waiting for this to happen. For the three top premium hero choices, in my mind at least, to be the two bands and the first pick. And finally, now we're seeing it here between Dignitas and Stigma. We did have a first ban onto Illidan from Dignitas, followed up by a second ban onto Jaina from Stigma. And we had a first pick, Lost Vikings. By Dignitas. Such a strong hero on this map and such a strong hero in general as well. Yep, definitely. And well, Bala secured. The Vikings first pick is something that is very, very interesting, I have to say. I mean, that is something we haven't seen so far. There was not a single game where we had Vikings first pick. It was always something that came as a surprise in the mid or mostly at the end of the draft because you want to secure other cores before, maybe healers, tanks that just fit in your strategy. But now that we have the Vikings looking at it and in the last game, um, there were some close calls on the boat where Diablo was almost able to manage to get the boat down within seconds after uh, using the ultimate. But then it survived somehow on like 100 HP and then dished out full duration of the heroic ability, which was, was kind of bad, obviously, like timing-wise, getting yeah so much out of this ultimate when the boat is already on low HP. Either way, we're going to see ETC now after that Vala. Yeah, Vala ETC up. Pretty strong second pick to follow up the Vikings, taking away one of the top premier ranged assassins in the game, as well as ETC, which is such a strong warrior pick at the moment, especially with that stage dive global presence. But again, Dignitas grabbing that Tassadar here with the Vikings comp, so very nice here. Lost Vikings and Tassadar being two very um, heroes that just can't really die. I mean, Vikings, yeah, they, they're three little squishy heroes, but they have some, some tools in their kit that allow them to kind of survive. And then if all else fails, they can pop that longboat raid, giving them an extra HP bar. Tassadar obviously being a very immortal hero as well with his E ability, the phase shift. And we'll have to see what Dignitas picks up here as well. Maybe they want to steal away a good damage or maybe they want to get the support but yes it's going to be the sylvanas a yep. very nice pick 
I mean, they stole the Vikings and the Tassada from Stigma. Two heroes Stigma played in the first game. And now putting the Savannahs there as the third one, which they ran in game one as well. It it looks okay, but of course it, it puts us in a position that where comes the damage? Like, what, what kind of tank do we get? That's that's the biggest question. I mean, I can only say Diablo again. It, it wasn't too bad, to be honest. Like, did, I think that Diablo did quite a okay job in, in this game, but it was just the damage lacking. You can't tank forever, but do they go again for it? And do you think the Viking actually fixes that damage issue in comparison to uh, Sergeant Hammer? Yeah, I, I feel that, that the Vikings are, are quite nice in, in the damage department, and with especially with Sylvanas and Tastar. It's really going to be up to Dignitas to get a nice tank and healer combination with good synergy. I mean, it could be um, we see something like, I mean, even like a Stitches Malfurion or, you know, some good synergetic com combo. But we do have the Malfurion actually getting taken away by Stigma. Um, I don't know. I mean... Dignitas has some options there, but it could be a Diablo, definitely, is a possibility. Um, I don't know, Chen could be good too. Chen is pretty nice on this map for the fact that you can wander and keg different heroes off the boss point, allowing to get that steal in there. But yeah, it's going to be a Malfurion coming out here from Stigma, and what will their next hero be? That's a good question. I mean, we saw tank free drafts already. Maybe that's something Dignitas wants to come up with, but I really doubt that Diablo is still there on my radar. For for Stigma, um, the question is like, what do you pair with um, with the Mafurin? We saw a lot of Mafurin and Tassadar combinations, but that's not an option anymore. So instead, they come up with a cigar, which leaves still the question like, what do we see? Is it, for example, a Tyrande just to get um, another semi-damage source as well as some healing in there, some support? Is that really worth it because you don't really have a setup for the Lunar Flare? Or is it another DPS just in there and, and you suffice with the Malfurion alone, a one healer draft? Yeah, Tyrande is definitely possible. We have seen that before. Stigma kind of building a little bit of a Wombo combo possibility with the Devouring Maw into Entangling Roots. Valda also has the potential of using Reign of Vengeance to further combo with that, and Taranda can be a great follow-up there at the end. But we will have to see, as it is now Dignitas' turn to choose. They need a healer, they need a warrior. What will it be? There are so many good combinations to, to synergize together, but... Which one will it be? We'll have to see what they are thinking right now in this draft. Yep, and I take all that time. I'm sure they, they can just do it. Diablo was something we, we said, and then the question is like, do we see just a one support draft on both sides? I don't think so. Like Dignitas, they, they really felt comfortable with their double support. And yeah, as we speak, it's it's Riga. So Riga Diablo or Riga No Tank Seratul, something, something? Well, it looks like. It's going to be a Rhaegar here from Dignitas. And what is the other tank pick? Yes, it's and going Chen. to be that Chen. Ah. Chen, again, being really strong on this map because of the Wandering Keg, the ability to deny a boss that is currently being taken by your enemy, but also the ability to drink kind of in the face of your enemies at a tribute, taking a lot of damage. And, I mean, Stigma, they really don't have a lot of interrupts at this point. Taronda could be a decent pickup for them. But we do have, I mean, ETC, he is an option. Vala could be an option with Reign of Vengeance. To, but I don't know if they would want to waste a Reign of Vengeance. But yes, it is going to be yeah. that Toronto there to help with the interrupts and also help with kind of an AoE, kind of Wombo-y thing. Um, Toronto also being good at delaying tributes with the Owl. So, yeah, I really like the uh, composition coming out again from Stigma. Yeah, pretty, I mean, pretty. I was, I was talking, I mean, my guess was the Tarande, and I'm happy that I was actually right. Uh, when it comes to the Lunar Flare setup, I mean, we have we have Roots, then the post -ma, ma situation, and maybe the ETC Power Slide, or just generally any clutch fight. And I also think another additional stun helps uh, a lot against the Chen, so especially before he starts shielding up by drinking a lot of beer. I wish that would work like this in, in real life, but, well, it doesn't. But it's, it's quite interesting. I, I see a lot more potential now when I think about it, to be honest. I kind of, again, have to like Stigma's composition quite a bit, but Dignitas does have the Lost Vikings. They do have a lot of 
survivability with Rhaegar, the ancestral healing, with Tastar just being such a strong hero. And they do have the option to kind of negate a lot of the, the wombo combo possibility of Stigma, but we'll have to see, you know, what kind of uh, game plays out here, you know, how these teams play and how they uh, abuse their strengths and weaknesses. So really looking forward to this game. Again on Cursed Hollow, I really like this map, man. I, it, you know, I don't mind going back to this map as much as I would mind going back to another map. <laughs> True. Like, I like the other maps just way more. I, I don't hate Curse Hollow. I, it's very balanced. I mean, last game you saw how, how close it can be. And just, like, one call is then shifting the balance a bit. Is it a comeback or is it, a, like, a another, like, even deeper throw? Right now, well, the lobby started. Everybody's in there. We're just waiting for the readiness of all of them. And uh, as far as I can see, I think Dickenster is again on the left side. That was the wrong overlay. There we go, and now we just have to update the score. And I think then we are ready to go. I love how fast the teams are. I mean, some teams are so slow between their games, I guess, because they have the, the large amount of smokers there. And these teams, they're, they're pretty fast, instant in the new draft, and we're good to go. You know what I've found? That American gamers smoke a lot less than, uh, than European gamers. I just yeah. feel that... European gamers smoke a lot more. I, I don't know what it is. It's just an interesting thing I've kind of noticed over the years of playing different games. But yeah, definitely smoke breaks taking uh, a little bit of a factor in some of the waiting here. But um, I don't know the statistics, but isn't like smoking going like really, really down in the U.S. anyway? Uh, I mean, I have no idea. I I, have, I can't even take an educated guess on it. But <laughs> well, I, that, I, it would make sense, you know. You exported all the stuff, you know, sold us for almost a century the, the old cool Marlboro cowboy. And now that we all got cancer, you stop smoking and look how the Europeans just extinct themselves. Does <laughs> that, that make sense? That was the plan all along, Of course. It was all how planned. Did you, how did you, f did you figure it out, man? It's the, the, the Morica master plan, the extinction of Europe so you can conquer us without any combat. Yeah, fi so finally we can win Heroes tournaments. No, I'm just <laughs> I can't wait for more NA versus EU rivalry. Obviously being a very, very hot topic in the Twitch chat. And, um, but yeah, but we you, have... You heard it here first, right? Nick just confirmed that Genocide is the only way the American esports scene will win something against exactly, EU. Exactly, exactly. You, you heard it here first. C can confirm... But um, yeah, we do have 10 out of 10 players already. I'm really eager to get into this game. Uh, I really like the comp from Stigma. I feel like the Vikings comp coming here out of Dignitas is a bit weaker than what we saw last game from Stigma's Vikings comp. Yep, definitely. And, well, we have the same situation. Everybody, uh, everybody's ready. Oh, no, finally it's loading in. Did you figure out what sides the teams will be on yes, this time? Yes. I actually, I actually, this one, uh, this time I remembered, so it should be all fine. Dignitas on the left, Team Blue. Stigma on the right, one, one point ahead in the best of three, and should be on the right side. But I will see if they swapped before or if they didn't. Maybe they, they tried to troll me today. Yesterday, the team was definitely trolling with me. I changed the overlay twice, till I noticed they, they changed also twice in the lobby. But no, we are, we are all good. Chris here, the captain, everything is fine on the left side. No introduction today, because we said it already once in game number one. And this time, do we see some clash in the mid? To be honest, that's what I like about Dragonshire. Like this clash in the mid first, like maybe fishing, you know, for that one pickoff that gives you like that little tiny XP advantage and going to your lanes and soaking. But unfortunately on Cursed Hollow, everybody's like, okay, let's go to our lanes and let's fight at level 10. Yeah, a little bit more of a passive playstyle typically being seen here at the beginning of Cursed Hollow. But we do have uh, Team Stigma kind of grouping up here at the Watchtower. They did send their Zagara into the top lane. And it looks like Shad is going to meet up with Blood Dragon here, but no. Blood Dragon going to go back into the middle lane here. Yep. And it looks like we are going to have Tyrande and Malfurion heading to the bottom lane here for Stigma. 
Well, I guess stigma is, is again just finding out where Dignitas puts the, the emphasis on, where's the pressure in which lane, and then they're just gonna answer. I mean, Shed so far did exactly the same, like a mirror play from game number one. The drone in that spot, going in the mid, and then just keeping that lane. That's exactly what he did before. Standardized move already. And yeah, it's tri lane versus tri lane. Now stigma adjusted to it. This time it's Tassada, Savannah, and Arega. No SGT. And of course Tassada also being on the other side, so I'm I'm pretty curious how this lane is gonna pan out. Yeah, we do have that 3v3 lane here in the bottom, pretty standard here with the Sylvanas, with the Tassadar, so nice pushing power on both sides here, uh, mainly on the side of Dignitas though. And we do have the Vikings against Zagara in the mid lane here. Yep, I mean Cigar, they, they, uh, at first I thought it's like Cigar, just maybe some additional uh, pressure, sniping one of the Vikings for some, some tiny XP or something like that, but in fact it was a, a lane swap, so the ETC is facing now the other tank, and the Vikings, yeah, well, two in the mid, one top, just for the soaking potential they have, and oh, nice Luna Flare here, stunned on two, this is quite some XP, uh, uh, HP lost here on, on Sailors, but with that healing ward and still all three of them having the bell available, they can keep this peeling on and on and on. Yeah, Zagara being such a fearsome lane, solo lane, laner, and putting Chen in that middle lane is definitely really nice. Zagara not having any kind of interrupt, so able to just drink at his heart's content and clear the wave without worrying too much. Yeah, Vikings were a little bit hard pressed to deal with that Zagara, so I really like that lane switch up there. Yep, and uh, this time Stigma is actually going really, really fast on those Giants. I think last game, if I'm not mistaken, the team with Sylvanas that was Stigmatas, they were the first ones to actually work on the Orcus, but the timing, the timing is just perfect. They go for the Giants, Dignitas couldn't stop that, they expected it, but uh, just before, well, just before the, the Tribute spawns, they put some pressure in that bottom lane, which means maybe, maybe, maybe that's a 100% Tribute. It looks like it. Vikings not bothering at all. Nope. Goes to Stigma. Yeah, really nice there by Stigma. Not only were they able to pick up that first tribute, but able to take those Siege Giants without losing any heroes. Dignitas was trying to aggress on there, but just a little bit too late to notice. And uh, yeah, so we now have Rhaegar from Team Dignitas taking those Siege Giants, being very versatile. Uh, of a support able to jungle with relative ease with that lightning shield. Yep. And, and we yeah. have both teams level 6 almost being at the same second so at the moment everything is fine but now bottom a bit more pressure obviously like some fishing with the Luna Flare didn't really work out but those giants as long as they are of course not getting killed they're doing quite some damage and the second tribute again spawning in a to be honest, in a very convenient spot again for, for Stigma, very close to them. The top tribute was a relatively neutral one, but with everybody just focusing on that bottom lane, maybe even trying to steal those giants, like it was also very convenient for, for Stigma. So the second tribute now, and we have to see, Stigma, I, I really think they, they want to go for this. ETC, of course, he doesn't have stage dive yet, we don't have level 10, so he remains top for now. But let's see, it looks like Stigma gets it, yes, this is a 2-0. Dignitas again just giving those tributes away for almost free. Yeah, and another nice lane optimization coming out from Stigma this time, rotating Vala to mid and putting Zagara in bottom, knowing the Zagara is kind of her strength is cancelled out, laning up against that Chen. So adding a little bit more pushing power into the bottom lane. And now almost grabbing this cannon tower in the bottom here. And ETC having to deal with the Vikings and the Siege Giants in the top lane. And uh, yeah, Stigma finally taking out that cannon tower in the bottom. Yep, that's like the tiny advantage they needed in experience, but if you look at the experience, everything's fine so far. And also ETC actually a bit struggling against the Vikings. Nurk doing really a good job driving out that, that ETC, and now that well, the Giants are coming in, a bit more pressure in that top lane. However, everything is absolutely fine at the moment when it comes to experience. Beautiful timing here by Link. He gets that Bruiser Cam fast back to the third tribute spawn here of this game. Five minutes in. So we have pressure now in the mid. We have pressure top. EDC still can't come to this tribute. He's still just there to defend. We have a 4-on-4 four four situation here around this tribute. Yeah, I mean, the Vikings have just kind of been doing their own thing this game, not really going 
for the experience, so their experience advantage is only 100 ahead of the Zagara here, so not too much splitting happening from the Lost Vikings, just kind of putting pressure in that top lane, but finally in advantageous position on the tribute for Dignitas, and they were going to pick up their first tribute of the game. Yep, definitely. That was... I mean, they wanted to start a tiny bit more time. The Owl was flying, but it was just... Yeah, the timing was was absolutely off. They, in the end, they decided to just drop this tribute, and Vala instead went for killing that Bruiser camp in the mid. And now, of course, Sigara and Vala, they take their own Bruiser camp a tiny bit delayed. So a one-on-two three situa uh, one on two situation at the moment when it comes to the tributes. And the experience, this game is, is definitely a lot closer than game number one, where Stigma could claim an early advantage this time. Well, we have to see first situation. This might be the situation. Link, really, really low. He gets one heal off, but that's it. But no follow-up damage right there. The owl, it doesn't even connect. The, it, it hit like the tail of the wolf, but not enough. Yeah, Link getting in a little bit of a dangerous situation there, getting hit by that Lunar Flare, but able to escape with his life. And now we have both teams now with their heroic abilities on that level 10. We have the Bruisers pushing out for Dignitas. When they want oh, to fight. Look at this. They single Sagara out here, but at the moment, no, it doesn't really work. They're both silenced, but Sagara, it's, he, she still lives. I don't know how, and now Ancestral Healing right on that Sylvanas. And look at all this damage coming now. That Starfall, of course, securing them. Nobody wants to go in there, and maybe even Tassada being stunned. One hit, and I can't even believe it. Dignitas with a very good start. They lose two, now they lose at least one Viking. Never mind that. Just the last second, he gets the boat off, but this boat is just there to repel them. Dignitas definitely pulling the shortest straw here in this one. Yeah, definitely a nice team fight there coming out from Stigma. And they're going to be picking up this tribute. Actually, Shed canceling the pickup on that, wanting to delay it just a little bit so they're able to get maximum value out of that. And now Dignitas once again aggressing in the mid, but not going to be able to do much here. And that's going to be the first curse of the game going over to Team Stigma. Yep, the question is what can they do now with this curse? I mean, experience-wise, even after this fight, it's relatively even, so Dignitas is not out of the race, but of course, they have to mount a good defense now against this curse, otherwise Stigma is pulling ahead, and at the moment, it looks like they're all falling back. This is very obvious. I think Dignitas knows that this will end up in a boss, but... I mean, they already have the right response, they're starting it, but I'm not so sure that boss is actually in time. Chen is going top. Does he use that barrel? No, he doesn't even have it ready. Oh my god, it's, it's a bad timing. So, he's there, sure, but... Jesus, I'm not really sure if that was worth it. Even, even just for the sake of saying hello or, or trying something. Yeah, I don't think he really needed to do that. And, uh, Dignitas is gonna pick up their Grave Golem, but... Yeah, we do have Stigma pushing into the top lane with their Grave Golem. And uh, Vala going to, I guess, go to get the Seed Giants? Or maybe, no, she's going to defend the Grave Golem there of Dignitas. So it's going to be another fort here. Well, the first fort here for Stigma taking out Dignitas's top fort. And we do have Stigma responding to the Grave Golem now and trying to defend it. I guess that Vala is, is enough maybe to even keep the, uh, the fort here alive. I'm not so sure about it, but it might actually happen, yeah. It's, it's relatively low HP, but still alive, which means no XP right there for Dignitas. The boss in top, of course, paired with the curse, definitely a lot more effective right there. I was kind of surprised they didn't launch any, like, push in the mid. That was direction I thought but at the moment. Nope, they're just going to keep those bruises safe. Of course, taking those bruises and then some action in the mid, that would be the most interesting outcome. And at the moment, yes, they're gonna kill him, they claim them, but do they go in? No! Actually, Tassada moving on to it, but no, if you use that ability, you can't claim them. So in the end, Starfall just clearing the way, and those bruises, they will march forward. And I think Stigma, now they mount their either push in bottom or mid. Yeah, Wailing Arrow coming out there from Dignitas, but really not able to capitalize on it. We did have the Starfall in response from Stigma to kind of zone out any potential follow-up. So definitely trading some heroics here. Not the biggest uh, deal here, but we do have both teams on level 13 and four heroics on each side at the moment. Could we see a fight? We do have Stigma here kind of poking at that mid fort, trying to get some more buildings down here. But they're going to get pushed back by this wave and the combined... Uh, 
Oh, well, but the barrel is coming out, but I don't really know for what purpose. At the moment, it's rather helping more with the retreat. The Maw is also coming out, but look at the ETC. Nice position there. The Viking so low, he had to help himself into the boat. But Vala, Vala being really low, but the positioning is good. He's getting healed, and now the Vikings are right there. The ETC, however, now this is a, a tiny bit in trouble. He needs to heal, he needs to shield, he needs something. He gets it just before he hits the gate. In the end, well, we have one little Viking down, but the rest is still alive. Both teams just close to, I don't know, any result that kind of fails and hold that Lunar Flare. That was kind of precasted for the trajectory of Blood Dragon, but he didn't move. He just drank some beer and that's it. But still, it ends up in a keep down and, of course, again, a very convenient spot for a tribute if you are Stigma, that is. Yeah, I have to give some credit to the supports there of Stigma, able to keep Shad alive. He was so very low, and yeah, Dignitas is engaged, not really paying off for them, and now they're going to lose another tribute over to the side of Team Stigma. Now, let's take a look. There's still a little bit left on the boss timers. Most likely, the next major engagement going to be over. Well, it looks like it's going to happen now. We yeah, oh, what a nice in boxing. Here. Sylvanas from north and south and it really hurts now look at this Rhaegar he had to pop that ancestral healing just to get away but they got what they wanted like sure we get Savannah's on a 30 seconds bye bye timer we get the bruises and defend top those giants that are pushing a bit in but even low that's just like two yeah two hits by Shad and that's it so with this nice timing they can repel even that push here on the team yeah, definitely. I mean, Dignitas trying to do what they can, grab some cannon towers there in the mid, but they're going to have to back off now. Looking like they want to rotate clear that bottom wave out as the lane is pushing a little bit here, but they're also going to have to respond to these bruisers coming out, and soon enough, the Siege Giants as well from Team Stigma. Yep, we have to see where this one is going. I mean, they claim the Giants. We have another 40 seconds or so, 45 seconds actually, till the boss comes up. So we will have one boss after this tribute. This tribute, however, it's it's not a very crucial one. It's it's like a, a 2-1, depending on, on which side. So we have to see, do they actually go for some split push? Vega versus Vala here in the mid-ETC, obviously doing that job in the top stage dive. It should be, no, 20 seconds on the stage dive, so he can't actually come for this tribute. So, stalling time is at the moment Stigma's goal. They have to get somehow 20 seconds out of this, and then ETC could come in for a good fight, but maybe they try something here on the Vala in the mid, but Tassadar Rega, that's not enough for a kill, not even close. And this way, Stigma, they're gonna get their 2-1 tribute situation, and Dignitas is just heading back, because look at this Vala. Against two, he mounts a nice defense, but maybe now with the slow of Savannah's, Nope, it's not really happening. The split push of Sigma just way, way better. But look at the XP. It's relatively even. Game 1, they were always a level ahead. This time, it's just half a level. Yeah, Dignitas really didn't want to fight there. They did not have level 16, and the tribute for Stigma wouldn't have meant a curse. So, okay to clear out those bruisers in mid and kind of just give up that tribute. But now we do have Dignitas finally on that level 16 talent tier. Both Grave Golems still up in the next tribute going Stigma would be a curse, so we're definitely going to see a team fight here in the I near future. I think the next one should be top, right, by Mr. R and Jesus. So they're already getting in position. Dignitas, they, they just don't want to give that tribute. But the problem is, if you give the tribute, you're going to lose the boss as well. But if you also leave, then you will give them the tribute, and it will also follow up in, in a boss kill by Stigma. So I think if that tribute spawns top, it's better for Stigma but it's bottom so actually now Stigma has to adjust their positions and look at it Chen actually already going in but taking quite some damage now he's getting stunned and rooted and everything ancestral healing it's too late it's too late he's already down now Stigma they have to just catch whatever they can and this is the advantage they were looking for like one of the Vikings is going down as well as collateral damage but they get the curse and with this they're probably gonna claim that bottom golem and I have no idea how Dignitas can stop this this is a awesome situation for for stigma yeah chen just giving up that mobility to try and drink but the toronto lunar flare almost instantaneously coming out with the follow-up route there from malfurion as well and he was able to be picked off the ancestral healing just too late there coming out from the Rhaegar of a team dignitas but again it's going to be a curse for stigma and they have a grave golem here so a very nice position for them to be in 
I mean, it takes a while till that golem actually arrives, so we have a 5-on-5 five five situation right now, but if Stigma wants to, they can just go for the other boss, but at the moment, the barrel, the barrel's coming in, the Kek just pushing them all in, but I'm not really sure if that's the target he wanted. He's so low, too lost, and even the Chen being pretty low, that bow, it's, it's not really doing anything, it's going down, and... I think we are looking right now here at the end. It's only level 18 and 17. They're gonna get that forward, but if they want to, they can go for the core and they go for it. The GG call already out by Chris. The captain calls it. He just doesn't see a chance. And I have to agree because if this game would keep on going with another boss, they would be level 20 versus level just close to 18. And from there on, we had that situation in game one already. Stigma, nice game. I mean, amazing work there from Stigma. Give these guys an organization. Give these guys a sponsor. They're showing themselves. They're proving themselves here in this tournament and taking a clean 2-0 off of Team Dignitas. Yeah, it's let's let's look at the stats what we got, but it's it's pretty much as expected. Vala got a lot of uptime in the split push and everything, owning the hero as well as the siege damage. On the other side, Savannah's top in the siege damage, that's no surprise at all, but I mean, look at the damage dealt, and that it, it comes down to what we had before. Like, the first game we, we said, where's the damage Dignitas? We just didn't get it out, but at least there, uh, we had, I think, Norok on the SGT pulling numbers like like 40k or something, but here Savannah's like not even 30k and the Vikings which is like the 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 second damage source we were expecting on 17k Chen didn't get much through and a Tassada being I don't know with the Vikings along those numbers. It's, it's kind of disappointing Yeah, I mean the damage coming out from the side of Dignitas being a little bit too specialized. They did have the Vikings, Tassadar, and Sylvanas. So not really a hero with massive kill potential. I would have liked to have, you know, for them to have a like a hero like Vala to just dish out the damage. But again, I feel that they kind of lacked in the draft department there and Team Stigma doing so well in that game. Another clean victory for them. Yep. Uh, easy to O, I think, for Stigma, but that means you just traded one, one team you beat with the. Uh, I don't know. It it didn't didn't look too hard for Stigma, but then again, the opponent you go like against now, is is very hard. Game is two versus Stigma. I think this is gonna be a very very close one. So Stigma, they only disappointed in the round one of the winner bracket, but then again, they they went again uh, in the round two. I even mean, but they went again Navi. So that's something where you can absolutely justify a loss. Here they prevail against Dignitas and they stay in the tournament against Gamer 2. And now it gets interesting because that next loser bracket match, it means who is getting into the loser bracket finals. So Gamers 2 or Stigma. And right after that, we have the winner bracket final. And then we have pretty much our finalists already. We only have to play those two finals, like this loser bracket match and the two finals. And then we have our best of five situation. We know which team it is. It's going to be super exciting. But, of course, I think it's scheduled to 18 CEST, which is... 40 minutes from now. So I have to check if we can start somehow earlier if the teams already arrived. But I mean, those games, they are scheduled. Some teams, they just don't show up that early. So we have to check this with the admins. So I guess stay tuned. Last words, Nick? Uh, stay tuned. We have some really good matches to come. So yep. stay tuned, guys. Keeping you informed in chat and here on the screen, guys, when the next one is coming up. As I said, 18 CST is the original schedule, but I guess we're going to start a bit earlier if the teams uh, agree on it. So, be right back.